All right, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. And once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Rakar, Kwadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're in, seeing that the Heavenly Father Yahweh, through His Son Yahweh Shai, have given us this knowledge, this truth, which is our light in the darkness of this world. And that's pursuant to Isaiah 60 and 1, where it says, gross darkness to people. And that's the majority of these people on the planet Earth. They are, they are in total gross darkness. They don't know what the hell is going on. Anyway, we have this light, which is able to make us see through all this darkness out here. And um, I was watching this video here by uh, put up by a Hebrew Israelite, Yehawadah. Uh, the name of the video is entitled Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. And that's a quotation from scripture. And um, man, <laughs> you could, the, the, now, uh, the individual to the right of your screen, uh, I guess he came up and uh, was discoursing with the brother. I believe the brother's name is Yawakanan. All right. I believe that's his name. Uh, the, the, you know, the brother on the left, the teacher. And uh, if, if, if I am incorrect, please, brother, please correct me uh, as to your name. <laughs> man, I have a problem with names, man. I have to really, really know you for your name to, to uh, really stick with me, you know. So please do not take it personal. But pretty much this is some real good teaching here. And I felt I should do I felt I should do a video on on uh you know on this on this video, at least a portion of it. Hopefully it's edifying as well as exhorting to you brothers and even a few a few of you sisters out there that watch these videos. You know, you you'll notice the joy on the face of that uh, that individual that came up, the individual on the right of your screen, as uh, the brother was teaching him, his questions that he had was being answered. And every time it, it you know, what the brother was saying, the teacher was saying to him, every time it resonated with him, you see the joy on his face. You see the joy in his in his uh, in his spirit. You know, and I, I know what that I know what that feeling is like. You know, you you you're waking up from basically you're waking up from sleep. You know, you uh, and the sleep is what sleep is the lies that we've been taught out here, all the BS that we learn from our 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 oppressor colonizer, if you will, talking about Esau Edom, all the nonsense that he taught us. Now we finally have the truth and we're waking up. Okay, so without further ado, let me play some of this video for you. Also, um, uh, the brother to the left, I believe, like I said, I believe his name is Yawa Um He made a statement that even prompted me to do this video more. He said, um, he said, look, and he used the, the scripture, as a matter of fact, let me go to the scripture where the Apostle Paul talked about the reason why the Heavenly Father raised up Pharaoh. I think it's in Romans, the ninth chapter. Yeah. Romans, the ninth chapter, the 17th verse. He's, it, it says, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, now this is talking about uh, Pharaoh back in Egypt, you know, the, the, the Pharaoh that pretty much dealt with Moses, okay, that's, that's the Pharaoh is talking about, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, <coughs> excuse me, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, so the modern day Pharaoh is Esau, the so-called white man, beginning with the top banking families, and the heavenly father have given them their power. The Heavenly Father have set them on high. 
the Heavenly Father have made them be on top. Okay, so reading on, it says, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And, and when is that going to happen? When the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, takes this man down, takes this modern-day Pharaoh down. The Heavenly Father, he built him up. In other words, there's a saying, uh, you're being fattened up for the kill. That's the old saying, you're being fattened up for the kill. Well, this so-called white man, Esau, Edom, the Edomites, beginning with their top banking families, they're being fattened up for the kill. The Heavenly Father is raising them up, you know, making them reach their zenith, their apex, if, if you will, so that when the Heavenly Father send back his son, Yahweh Shai, he's going to show his power in them when he takes them down, because he's going to take them down with a, with a great power, okay? Uh, that being the nuclear missiles, that's number one, and, no, and number two, Yahawashai and the chariots. Well, I would say number one would be Yahawashai and the chariots. <laughs> Yahawashai is always number one. And a, a close second is those nuclear missiles. Because the nuclear missiles is really the Heavenly Father's army. And you can read about that in Joel, the second chapter, as part of the Heavenly Father's army. As a matter of fact, he created the nuclear missiles for that very purpose of bringing down this Monday Pharaoh. And, the, and, and, you know, the nuclear missiles are immensely powerful. The work that they're going to do is going to be in, so much so that in the book of Daniel, it says a time of trouble the earth has never seen before. So let that marinate in your melon, all right? <laughs> let that roll around your head a little bit. Isaiah 54 and 16. This is the Heavenly Father speaking through the prophet Isaiah, right? He said, Behold, I have created the smith. That's the modern-day blacksmith, which is what? Your scientists, right? He gave them the knowledge to do what? I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. That's to create those nuclear missiles. Okay? And that bringeth forth an instrument. What is the instrument? What we know today as the nuclear missile the different kinds of missiles that they have out there, okay? That bringeth forth an instrument for his work, for the Heavenly Father's work. And what is his work? To magnify himself, listen good, his work, the Heavenly Father's work, which his name is Yahweh, is to magnify himself in Esau's destruction by those missiles and the chariots of the Lord led by Yahweh and the angels. I'm going to say that again. When it says an, for an instrument for his work, what is his work? Whose work? First of all, the Heavenly Father, his name is Yahweh. His work, because he's fattened up this devil for what? For the kill. His work is going to be to bring down this devil with those nuclear missiles and Yahweh and the angels. That's going to be his work. That's going to be the magnum opus. Look that term up. The magnum opus of the Heavenly Father. And I think that's what I'll call this video. The magnum opus of the Heavenly Father. Which his name is Yahweh. That's the very reason why he's put Esau on top. So he can show his power in him when he brings him down. When the Heavenly Father brings him down. And that's the statement that the brother Yahweh Kanan made which you, you, you're about to him say it, because I'm going to play the clip, that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. So that's, that's what the, the nuclear missiles are called, the waster. And you know, this, this lines up with Zephaniah, the, uh, the uh, first chapter, it speaks about a day of wasteness and desolation. Let, let's read that. Let's read that. Zephaniah 1 and 15 i think it is that day uh let's start the 14 verse the great day of the lord is near remember his work this is what the lord is coming to do the one you call jesus christ which his name is yahweh shai this is what he's coming to do the great day of the lord is near it is near in haste of greatly 
even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. The mighty man are these armies. Why is that? Because Yahweh is going to destroy Esau's armies and the armies of the other nations that's going to come against the heavenly father or rather come against the son and the angels. The heavenly father is going to put the spirit on them to come against his son and the angels. Okay. And that's, that's, that's the scripture where it says there was war in heaven. That's written in the book of Revelation. That's that war that, that Yahweh Shai himself is bringing. Okay. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Now you know what that means. That those are the armies that's going to be facing the Lord, because the Lord is going to be destroying them. And even the prophet Ezra saw it in a vision, and he recorded it in the book of 2nd Ezra. Okay? That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness. Now, again... The previous scripture said what? I have created the waster to destroy. That's the Heavenly Father speaking through the prophet Isaiah. He said, I have created the waster to destroy. What's the waster? Those nuclear missiles. Those nuclear missiles, which is, the, which is part of the army of the Lord. Joel, the second chapter. Okay? So it says, a day of wasteness and desolation. That's what they're going to bring. As a matter of fact, case in point, America... After America is hit by those chariots and the missiles, America is going to be 100% desert when the fire dies down. And that's recorded in the book of Isaiah, the 34th chapter. And after that, Esau will rule no more. As a matter of fact, beginning with the top banking families, they're going right into slavery underneath us Israelites. That's their next stop. Okay? So it says, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Now we that know this knowledge, this truth, we're hoping to be delivered from that day. We're hoping to be in a safe place when that happens. That's our hope. That's what it means to be saved. For you stupid, wacky-tacky Christians out there talking about you're saved. You're not saved from what? What are you saved from? Are you saved from this day? No, because the day hasn't happened yet. Mind you, this is a, 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 a scripture in the Old Testament, and this is a future prophecy. This, this hasn't even happened yet. And this, this was written thousands of years ago. Okay? We're waiting patiently for this to happen. Because we know what's going to happen on the flip side of it. So that being said, let's get into the video here. When he released him, he still went after them. Because yeah, he was happened. angry. What happened yeah. to him? Now, pay attention to what the, what the teacher is saying. And uh, pay attention to the uh, to the, uh, the the brother on the on the right. Pay attention to his uh, demeanor. Every time the teacher would say something that resonated with him, I guess answered his his, his the questions that he's he's because he's been it's clear the guy on the right he's he's been searching. I mean that's obviously clear. So when he's finally getting those answers, he's he's rejoicing with joy in his spirit. Okay. Yep, 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 well, yep, yep, yep. The Lord said to Moses, "Is the Lord said to uh, the Apostle Paul, the only reason why He raised up Pharaoh to be such a superpower is so that when it was time to take him down, He knew who took him down. It was the Most High." Exactly, and 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 by that, the Heavenly Father is going to magnify His name, the same way when He took down uh, ancient Pharaoh that dealt with Moses. When, he, when, when the Heavenly Father took him down, his name was magnified. How do we know this? Well, you go in the book of Joshua. Matter of fact, let me read it to you. Let me prove it to you. If you go in the book of Joshua, right? Now, this is based upon what this harlot, which Joshua had saved alive, her and her family, right? Because the harlot helped the spies that Joshua sent. All right, based upon what this harlot said, we know that that incident that happened to Pharaoh and his army in which they were drowned in the, the uh, Gulf of Suez, which is the most northern tip of the Red Sea, the incident that happened to Pharaoh and his army, because Pharaoh and his army drowned in, in, in that part of the water, that body of water, that incident 
serve to magnify the Heavenly Father's name, which is Yahweh. His name was magnified. Now, how do we know this? Let's read it. J Joshua, I think it's Joshua, the second chapter. Okay, now if you read uh, the first verse, Joshua 2, her name was, uh, the harlot's name was Rahab, right? Rahab shelters spies. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho, the land of Canaan, which later would become our land, the land of Israel, right? And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab, and lodged there. Now, let's get to the point. Listen to what Rahab said to those spies. The eighth verse. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. So she hid them on the roof, right? And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord have given you the land. And that land would be known as the land of Canaan, later the land of Israel, right? And that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. And that was what? The Gulf of Suez, the, the most northern tip of the Red Sea. Did you hear what Rahab said? She said, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. So, <laughs> so again, when the Heavenly Father Yahweh sent back his son Yahweh Shai to destroy the power of Esau, Edom, the whole world will hear and see of it. The whole world will hear and see of it. And that is, that's going to serve once again to magnify the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. That's why it is written in the scripture, there is no new thing under the sun. So it's going to happen again. Okay? For we have heard. Now this is coming from a woman. A harlot. Right? For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When you came out of Egypt. And what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites. That were on the other side. Jordan. Sihon and Og. Whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard, or as soon as, and as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt, meaning their minds, they had no courage left, right? Neither did there remain any more courage in any man. There you go. Because of you and those spies. What nationality were those, were, were those spies that Joshua sent? They were Israelites. Okay, they were Israelites. Because of you. For the, for the Lord, your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth, and in earth beneath. Now, remember the scriptures say the gods of the other nations are idols. There's only one God and a mediator. The one God, his name is Yahweh, and the mediator is his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, our mediator. Okay, our mediator. So there you go. So. When the Heavenly Father did that to Pharaoh, just like it said back in Romans, right? Just like it said back in Romans, for this purpose have I raised thee up. It is right here. Romans 9 and 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose. What purpose? So I can magnify my name in your destruction, Pharaoh. I fattened you up for the kill. And that's the same thing happening with the so-called white man today. He's being fattened up for the kill. Okay? Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name <laughs> might be declared throughout all the earth. Wasn't that the case with uh, uh, Rahab and her people? Was not the name of the Lord magnified in the destruction that came upon Pharaoh and his armies? Huh? <laughs> there you go. So it's going to happen again. And that's what the brother was saying, the teacher was saying here, and that's what inspired me to do this video that I'm now doing. He knew who took him down. It was the most high. Let's bring it back. So the second, only after that last plague, 
he released the Israelites. And even after that, when he released them, he still went after them. Yeah. Because exactly. he was angry and what happened to him. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord said to Moses. He went after them because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, hardened the heart of Pharaoh once again. Remember, the Heavenly Father kept hardening Pharaoh's heart. The Heavenly Father even told Moses, look, I'm going to, look, when you go to him, he's not going to listen to you because I'm going to harden his heart. Now, the, the last plague, you know, the last plague prompted Pharaoh to tell the Israelites, get the hell out of my, get the hell out of Egypt, get the hell out of my land. But for the last time, the Lord had hardened Pharaoh to go after them, after the Israelites. And that's when Pharaoh and his whole army drowned in the Gulf of Suez, the northern tip of the Red Sea. Okay, so the Heavenly Father put the spirit on Pharaoh to bring about his own destruction and his uh, and his, the armies that uh, came with him. The Heavenly Father put the spirit on them to bring up, bring about their own destruction. Okay, and he's going to do the same thing with Esau. The Heavenly Father is going to put the spirit on Esau to fight Yahweh and the angels. Let me show you that real quick. Okay, we're going to read one scripture to prove that. It is right here. Now, just like I said, you know, the, the Heavenly Father hardened Pharaoh's heart to chase the Israelites, which brought about his own demise and the demise of his army. Well, here we go. Second Esdras, the 13th chapter and the 8th verse. This is the vision that Esdras saw of Esau and the other nations battling Yahushai and the angels. And this is what he said. And after this, I beheld and lo, all day, which were gathered together to subdue him, who's the him, Yahushai, was so afraid, just like Pharaoh. Pharaoh was so afraid, but the Lord put the spirit on him to chase the Israelites to bring about his own destruction. And it's the same thing with Esau. Lo, all they that were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid and yet durst fight. So they're going to come against Yahweh and the angels in those chariots, those so-called UFOs. They're going to, be, in other words, Esau and his armies and his technology, they're going to battle Yahweh and the angels and their technology, which Yahweh and the angels, their technology, as in those so-called UFOs and chariots of the Lord, is far superior to Esau's technology, far superior. But the Lord is going to put the spirit on them to fight. This is what I'm reading here. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude, this is Yahweh Shai, right? That came against him. He neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire. And that's um, talking about the laser beam that's going to come out of those chariots, those so-called UFOs. All right. In other words, <laughs> the son of the heavenly father is going to hit them with laser beams of fire. And this, this is the same thing that Habakkuk, Habakkuk said the same thing in the book of Habakkuk, the, uh, either the second chapter or the third chapter. I believe it's the third chapter. Habakkuk saw the same vision. And he said the same thing. Okay? So this is this is a future prophecy, all right? So when Yahweh Shai comes, man, he's 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 been like the song by uh, Phil Collins, I've been waiting all my life for this moment. Uh what's the name of that song? In the air tonight. You know Phil Collins is getting getting into it. I've been waiting for all my life. Yahweh Shai been waiting for the last two thousand years for this very moment. Okay, so this is going to be his moment. This is going to be his his time to really, really shine upon the planet Earth. And at the same time, he's going to magnify his father's name, Yahweh. Those two names are going to be magnified, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Reading on, it says, And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only as I, only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire 
and out of his lips a flaming breath that's those new um, that's those uh those laser beams of fire not to mention the nuclear missiles that's going to be flying around and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests same thing and they were all mixed together the blast of fire the flaming breath and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight as Esau and the other armies and you know Esau and the other nations and their armies that's what I meant to say Esau the other nations and their armies coming against the Lord and the angels right uh, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight <laughs> and burned them up every one so you're going to tell me, right? You're going to tell me when this happens, the whole world, the people that are left on the planet Earth that are alive, you're going to tell me they're not going to want to know who did this uh, uh, act? They're not going to want to know the name of the individual who did this act? <laughs> Come on, man. Of course they're going to want to know the name because they're going to be terrified. And guess what that name is? We know the name. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai. Those two names are going to be magnified, just like it was in ancient Egypt. Really, the name of the Heavenly Father was magnified in ancient Egypt, Yahweh. Okay? But this time, it's going to be Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Those two names are going to be magnified. See? So, again, and burn them up, everyone, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude... Nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Now, this reminds me of the scripture, the Lord shall threaten who shall not be beaten to powder before his presence. So you got to understand, man, this is why, we, why you think we're so diligent in this work? Why you think we, we serve the Lord with fear and trembling? Because the day of the Lord is not going to be a nice day. It's going to be a most terrible day. But for us, it's going to be a glorious day. Us that know this knowledge is truth. And we expect to be delivered by Yahweh Shai on that day. Yahweh Shai and the angels. And that's pursuant to Matthew 24 and 30. Okay? So, let's get back to the video. Bear with me for a minute. Still went after them because yeah, he exactly. was angry. What happened yeah, to him? Yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah. The Lord said to Moses, "Is the Lord said to uh, the Apostle Paul, the only reason why he raised up Pharaoh to be such a superpower is so that when it was time to take him down, he knew who took him down. It was the Most High. Mm -hmm. So the same thing with the white man. The Most High is raising him up with all of his power and wealth. He thinks he's unstoppable, unbeatable. He's got the best weapons, the best armies." Whether we're talking about Russia or America, they're all the same white man. All of these Edomites, they've got the best power. They, they, they control the world, the banks, everything. They've got the money. They're the richest people in the world. They're the, they're the top considered people. Everyone wants to be like the so-called white man and follow, follow what they do. So they're the superpower of the, of the time. The reason why they've been raised up to be so powerful and rich is when it's time to take them down, they know who took them down. You understand? Well, it's the same thing it is. And to back the brother up, it's only going to take Yahweh Shai and the angels one hour to bring this man down. Think about that. One hour. 60 minutes. Like that show. 60 minutes. Let me show you that. One hour. 60 minutes. Okay. There's a few references to, to, the, to that scripture. Revelation 17 and 12, and the ten horns, which represents Esau's power structure, which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive... Okay, I'm reading the wrong scripture here. Forgive me. That was the wrong one. This is the one I want to read. I saw, I, <laughs> I saw one hour and I went crazy. Revelation 18 and 10. That's the one I want to read. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, because this hour here, is in, uh, this is a dark saying here in Revelation 17 and 12, since I read it. 
one hour of the beast. That's the, well, we know the beast is talking about the, the Rome, you know, the, the EU, which is, comes in the form of the, the modern day Roman Empire, the European Union. The one hour with the beast is what, when you uh, take one hour, right? Matter of fact, one day to the Lord is what? A thousand years to us. So you take, uh, uh, day is broken up into 24 hours. All right. You take one, you take 24 rather and divide it into a thousand years or take 24 divided into a thousand. So like it, that's what I meant to say. Take 24 and divide it into a thousand. It comes out to 41.6. We've done videos on this before. Those of you that are familiar with our videos, uh, you've, you've, you've seen us. Uh, break that down the one hour of the beast pretty much comes down to 42 years 41.6 which when you round it off is 42 years so that prophecy has been it's, it's it's you know it's been fulfilled this prophecy here revelation 17 and 12 okay so anyway let's get to what i want to get to revelation 18 and 10 standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour. Now that scripture right there, Revelation 18 and 10, is talking about one hour as in 60 minutes. That's how it's going to take the Lord. That's how long it's going to take the Lord to destroy Esau and his society, his kingdom. One hour. For in one hour is thy judgment come. Whose judgment? Esau, the Edomites. Because when you go in the book of Isaiah 63 and 1, it talks about who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Bozrah. That's a dark saying for Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is coming to take down the power of the Edomites. Just like the Heavenly Father Yahweh came to take down the power of Pharaoh, who he set up. Who he set up. is the same thing with the Edomites. Who do you think set them up? The Heavenly Father Yahweh. Through his son Yahweh Shai set them up. That's why they're on top. But on that certain day when Yahweh Shai comes with those angels... It's only going to take Yahweh Shai and the angels one hour. That's 60 minutes to bring this man's empire down. To bring his hopes, his aspirations of a so-called new world order. To bring that down. To destroy it. It's only going to take Yahweh Shai one hour to destroy this man's hopes and aspirations and dreams of a new world order. One hour. That's what the scripture is talking about here. Revelation 18 and 10. The other one, Revelation 17 and 12, which I read by mistake, that, that hour is a different breakdown to that. That's a dark saying. You have to uh, understand the scripture, 2 Peter 3 and 8, where it says, Be not ignorant of this matter. One day to the Lord is a thousand years to us, and a thousand years is one day. All right, so you divide. It takes 24 hours to make one day. You take 24, you divide it by a thousand. To to us, it's a thousand years. You take 24, you divide it by a thousand. You come up with 41.6. So that would be 41 years and six months. So to the Lord, one hour to us is almost 42 years. Because in the spirit world, there's a different time signature. All right. And again, we've done plenty of videos on that. That's that's a video for another time. Revelations, uh, Revelation 18 and 17. For in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. That's another reference to the one hour. That is talking about one hour as in 60 minutes. So great riches. Who has the riches? The Edomites. The Edomites have the riches right now. They're in their kingdom. They're in their power. In particular, the top banking families. All the riches that they, that they have... In one hour, they're going to lose all those riches. They're going to go from ra from riches to rags. As a matter of fact, that's in the book of J Job, the 20th chapter, the 21st chapter. Goes into that. Okay? For in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. Naught is an old English word meaning nothing. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea, by sea stood afar off. Meaning the other nations through the magic of uh, television, through the magic of the satellites, 
that are placed around the world in outer space, the images of the destruction of America will be viewed by the whole world. So the, the destruction of America will definitely be televised, all right, through the power of the satellites that are positioned around the world. All right, above, uh, how, uh, I believe it's over 100 miles above the Earth, about 150 miles above the Earth. There's all these satellites that ESO has placed out there. They will magnify the pictures of America being uh, destroyed by the chariots of the Lord and by the nuclear missiles. So that's going to be one hell of a day, man. And that's what we're reading here. That's how they're able to see the destruction all right, from afar off, like it says in Revelation 18 and 17, and uh, Revelation 18 and 19. Let's get back to the video. It down. They know who took them down. You understand? Well, it's the same thing he did to Pharaoh. He's coming again to do to these white to the white man. Mm -hmm. Trust me. We're gonna finish up here anyway. So he says here. So when he says he's coming to make wars, the church is not going to tell you that. Yeah. They're teaching. I've told this story. Coming to he's coming to make war with these nations. Come on, it's not going to come to play. And and the brother's right. The, the, the these church, these so-called churches, they don't teach that. All right. They, as the scripture have said, they put away the evil day. Okay. They don't teach that because primarily the majority of them don't know. All right. They don't know what these prophecies are really saying. All right. They don't know the prophecy where Yahweh Shai said in Isaiah, the 47th chapter, uh, he, he shall, I believe he, this is the chapter where he said he shall cry as a travailing woman. They don't know what that prophecy means. Let's go there real quick. Isaiah 47. And an example of that is the war that Yahweh Shai is going to bring. Here it is right here, Isaiah 47 and 3, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, meaning Esau is going to be exposed. Esau is being exposed right now. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Now, when you go in the book of Second Ezra, the scripture I just read, there, there's your example of him taking vengeance. That blast of fire, the flame and breath that Ezra's talked about. Well, there you go. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. What does that mean? That's how I say saying, look, when I come... 2,000 years ago, I came as a man. This time, when I come, I'm coming as this conquering power that you will not be able to deal with. This angelic, superior, conquering power. That's how I'm coming back. This is Yahweh Shai talking. And he's letting Esau know. And he's letting Esau know through his prophets. All right? Through his prophets, man. Let's go to Isaiah 63. I believe it also references the same the same attitude that was said in Isaiah 47. Again, Isaiah 63. What's the subhead in here? God's vengeance on the nations. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Notice Edom is 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 a is a specified here, Edom. Because who's who's ruling the planet Earth right now? What nation is ruling the planet Earth right now? The Edomites. Beginning with the top banking families, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, the usual suspects, Oppenheimers. So again, they're the ones in power right now, the Edomites. They're on top right now. Who is this that coming from Edom? So who is that talking about? Yahweh Shai, he's coming for the Edomites. With dyed garments from Bozrah, he's coming to kick the Edomites' ass. Okay? Then it says, from with dyed garments, dyed garments is a metaphor, a dark saying for the much bloodshed Yahweh Shai is going to bring with him. He's going to kill a lot of people, man. Destroy a lot of people. With dyed garments from Bozrah. Bozrah was a capital city in Edom. Just like Petra, another capital city. Okay, so the modern day Bozrah would be America. America would be the capital city of Edom. This is the, America is the cash cow of Edom. The Edomites. So the Lord is going to hit them right in the head. He's going to destroy their, their greatest cash cow, which is America. He's going to level it. He's going to turn it into a desert. <laughs> With dyed garments from Bozrah, 
this that is glorious in his apparel. And you might say, well, why is he going to do that? So the Heavenly Father can magnify his name once again. Because remember, his name has been hidden. His name and his son's name to the majority of the world. We know his name because he's revealed it unto us. The Heavenly Father has revealed his true name and his son's name unto us through this knowledge, this truth. But the majority of the world do not know the true name of the Heavenly Father and his son. So in this great destruction, the names of the Heavenly Father and the Son will be magnified, just like the Heavenly Father magnified his name during the time of Pharaoh and Moses. And we just read it. You see? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Who is the Savior? Yahweh Shai. Wherefore or why art thou red in thine apparel? Because Yahweh Shai is going to kill a lot of people. The red symbolizes the blood. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. The same thing. I have trodden the wine press alone. Is it talking about an actual wine press where people make wine? No. The wine press is a metaphor, a symbol for the people. Again, the Lord Yahweh Shai is going to kill a lot of people, man. He's going to kill a lot of people. That's why it says here, I have trodden the winepress alone. And of the people, there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. And you got an example of that in 2nd Esdras, when, when it speaks about the flaming breath. And even Esdras, when he saw that in the vision, he said he was afraid. Habakkuk said when he saw it in the vision, he, was, he became sick. The same thing with Daniel. So it's not going to be a nice day on that day. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. Now remember, the subject matter is who? Edom, the Edomites. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my remnant. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. Not just against the Edomites and the other nations, against two-thirds of the nation of Israel, the Lord is going to take out his vengeance. Because remember, many Israelites... Back then, they gave up the Lord. They made statements like, crucify him and let his blood be upon us and our children. Right? So you had many Israelites who rejected the Lord. So the Lord is going to take vengeance on them too. Okay, they're going to suffer the same punishment that the Edomites and the other nations are going to suffer. Okay, for the day of vengeance, like the Lord said here, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, meaning his mind, and the year of my redeemed has come. Who's his redeemed? The elect. And that lines up with Matthew, the 24th chapter. Okay? So we, listen, we can clearly see this. Clearly see it. What's going to happen on that day. All right? We can clearly see it. Okay? And the more we go through these scriptures, the more clearer we see it. Okay? So... He's coming to make war with these nations. Come on. Go. He's not going to come to play around. He's not coming to play. He's coming angrily like, yo, oh, he's been taking the mic. Yeah, like the brother said. He, you see, the brother's waking up. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming angry. I just read it. Isaiah 47, Isaiah 63. He said the day of vengeance is in his heart. Now, will you learn this in these wacky-tacky churches? The answer is no. You won't learn that. The only thing you're going to learn is God is all love. <laughs> you see? And that's why Jeremiah 4 and 22, that's why the Lord said, My people are sottish children. They have not known me. Sottish means stupid. One of the reasons is because of these phony pastors and preachers, and they're going to have to answer for, the, for, the, for their uh, uh, wickedness, for their folly in blinding the people because of these phony, which the Lord never sent them anyway. If the Lord had truly sent these people, these pastors and preachers, they would teach you the 100% truth. They would give you the real deal of what's going on. You see? But they're not doing that. Because they themselves have been blinded to the truth. Because the Lord ain't dealing with them. Right now, the Lord is only dealing with the elect of the nation of Israel, man. Okay? That's right. For your devilness. And yeah, you and I took told my you. people into captivity. And also, the way that we refer to Satan, what was his name? Because I refer to him as the name of Satan, but what would his name be, though? Oh, Satan, that's his name. Remember, Satan, it's huh? the, remember Satan is an angel, angel yeah. but he works for the Most High. Yes. On the left-hand side. Satan, right. He's not doing his own thing. Yeah. Satan is, is one of the sons of God. Satan, let me say that again. Satan is one of the sons of God. 
And you can read about that in the book of Job, the second chapter, the first verse. But his job, Satan, is to stir up wickedness on the planet Earth. That's his job. And he reports to the Heavenly Father. Not Satan battling the Heavenly Father. <laughs> Which they don't understand that scripture. The Satan is talking about in that scripture is the so-called white man, Esau, the Edomites. They're going to battle the son of the Heavenly Father when he comes back with those, with those so-called UFOs, those chariots with the angels. They're going to battle they, as in Esau and the other nations and their armies, they're going to battle the Hawashai and, the, the and the angels and their armies. All right? He's working for the Most High, but he's working with, with the white man, yeah. with Esau. Yeah. Yeah. They have the spirit of Satan. That's why... Yeah, who's coming. This is why the Apostle Paul said, who's coming. Let's read that. Who's coming is after. Talking about the so-called white man. Esau, the Edomites, their coming is after who? It is right here. Second Thessalonians, to back the brother up, uh, 2 and 9. Look at that. Look at the subheading. Man of lawlessness. Man of law, lawlessness. That's, that's the Edomites, man. That's why they have the title, uh, the man of sin. The Apostle Paul called them that. The man of sin shall be revealed. The, the, the man of iniquity, or the men of iniquity. That's Esau, the Edomites, beginning with their top banking families. That's them. Okay, let's read about it. For for Second Thessalonians 2 and 7, for the, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Yeah, they were in power even at, as that letter was being written to the Israelites in Thessalonica, Thessalonica by Apostle Paul. It says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Who's the mystery of iniquity? Esau. A lot of people don't know that Esau is actually the devil. He was created to be the devil. All right, he's the mystery of iniquity. He's, he's the one created to bring iniquity on the planet Earth, to bring wickedness, to bring lies, destruction. That's his lot. Everyone has their lot on the planet Earth. That's their lot. That's the lot of the Edomites, to bring lies, wickedness, you, you name it, debauchery. Anything wicked, that's their lot. The, the Heavenly Father created them for that very purpose. And that's why, it, it, you know, it's a mystery to, to, to the majority of people on the planet Earth. They don't know this. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Exactly. The Heavenly Father is allowing this man to do all the wickedness that he's doing until Yahweh Shai comes and takes him out of the way. Okay? And then shall that wicked be revealed, which Esau or the Edomites are being revealed now. They're being exposed now, as in these so-called white people, beginning with the top banking families. They're being exposed, okay, by us, by the prophets of the Lord, through these holy scriptures, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's these scriptures, helping to expose this devil. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's those missiles and the chariots. Even him. Now here's the point. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. See? With all power and signs and lying wonders. So, so Satan is working through this man. He gets his power from Satan. He gets his power from Satan. Which is the left hand side. Satan is the left hand side of the heavenly father. Satan works for the Heavenly Father. He's the Son of God, but on the left-hand side. That's where Esau get their power from, the left-hand side of the Heavenly Father. Remember, the scripture said, the Heavenly Father said, I, I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. There you go. That's how this thing works. Yeah. With Esau, they have the spirit of Satan. That's why everywhere they go, they murder, pillage, rape, kill. They don't care what they need to do to take what they want. Because, they are one. because they're the men of iniquity. They were created for that purpose. That's why they do the things they do. They, like you said, they rape, plunder, pillage. That's the lot that the Heavenly Father gave them. That's the, that's the spirit the Heavenly Father created, created them with. And there's nothing you can say or do that will change them. Okay? With Satan. Satan is, they have the spirit of Satan. 
with them. With them yeah. But Satan is one of the Most High's angels. Exactly. No well. one is more powerful than the Most High. Satan yeah. ain't this angel that went off and did. And he's right. Satan is one of the Most High's angels. That's easily that can be easily proven by going to the Book of Job, which I quoted earlier. Again, you're not going to learn this in these wacky tacky churches. You, you're simply not. Okay, here you go. Job, the second chapter, the first verse. Again, there was a day when the sons of God, subject matter, sons of God, right, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them, among who? The sons of God, to present himself before the Lord. Come on, man. So what is Satan? A son of God. But he's a son of God on the on the left-hand side which that's where you get the word sinister from. Left in Italian is sinistra, which means left. That's where you get the word sinister from. The left-hand side of the Heavenly Father is the sinister, sinister side. The right-hand side of the Heavenly Father is the righteous side. That's the side we come from, us Israelites. That's why you have a tribe called Benjamin. Benjamin in the Hebrew is banyamyan, which means son of the right. Look it up. Benjamin means son of the right. The right of who? The right of the Heavenly Father. And what's the left of the Heavenly Father? The sinister side. The Heavenly Father has two sides. You got to understand the duality of the Heavenly Father. And he keeps both sides in complete balance. Okay? And that's one thing. And I did a video about that. That's one thing the wacky tacky Christian don't understand. Balance. Okay? It's very easy to, to understand. Very simple. Exactly. No one is more powerful than the Most High. Satan yeah. ain't this angel that went off and did his own thing. Yeah. Most people fear Satan. They don't fear the Heavenly Father. But the one you should truly fear, and even Yahweh Shai said that. He said, I'll tell you one you should fear. Fear him that can kill both soul and body in hell. Who's that? The Heavenly Father. Because clearly, as it is written, the issues of death come from the Heavenly Father. Not from Satan. The issues of death come from the Heavenly Father. All right? The scripture in Jeremiah where the Heavenly Father said, you don't fear me. Will you not tremble at my presence? So most of these people, they fear Satan. They don't even understand what capacity Satan works in. When the truth is, you really should fear, really, the Heavenly Father and, of course, His only begotten Son should be feared. Okay? <laughs> it's fine. Exactly. I guess the yeah, most yeah, high. You ain't got that through your no, power. Mate, you know what I mean? The most high created him. You can only attempt, like, like That's I said. Right. It's, that, yeah. And the most high gave him the power, power to, to do, do that. that. And he said, and it's, yeah. and it's then to go so and do your thing. the churches, the way that they're interpreting the devil. That's and right. The, and like he's some individual like doing his own thing. That's the and another distraction. Complete thing. distraction. <laughs> complete distraction. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Gunshot. <laughs> see? You see? You see the joy, the joy in that man's spirit from waking up, from all the bullshit that 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 we've been taught. And Satan is doing his own thing. He's battling the heaven. No, no, he's not. <laughs> Distraction. They want you to believe. They want you to believe that he's living in this place called hell, and he's got his own gang doing his own thing, and that the Most High ain't got no power. Oh, he's the Lord. Yeah, the Heavenly Father got no power over him. And every now and then he, 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 he sneaks an opportunity to try to attack the Heavenly Father. Meanwhile, the Heavenly Father, what, the one question the wacky tacky Christian don't ask is, well, who created Satan? The Heavenly Father created Satan, man. The Heavenly Father is so powerful. His name is Yahweh, right? He's so powerful, he created his own adversary. How about that? For his purpose. He created his own adversary for his purpose. <laughs> Angel, just like how Michael is. So is Satan. But Satan's on the left hand side, Michael's on the right side. Because the most I deal is in total balance. balance. Total balance. And that's the one thing that the wacky tacky Christian does not understand. You know, guys like Vocab. Perfect example. You know. Do you understand? So for good. you to know I good, mean, you must know evil. evil. Simple. <laughs> you understand? Gunshot. See, this is the kind of reaction you get when you wake when you're waking up from the truth. Or wake rather waking up from lies. Waking up to the truth, I should say. Even I'm a little excited. This is the kind of reaction you get. Okay? The joy that comes into your heart. Finally I understand the truth. Finally I know the truth. 
That's all it is. That's all it is, brother. Clarity. Trust me. That's right. Sense. It's just that clarity. Sense. There's got to be some equilibrium yeah, in this whole thing. Be. You understand? Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, false balance is an abomination to the Lord. And like the like the teacher said, there have to be some equilibrium. Can you see why I had to do a response to this video? You know? But anyway, I'm going to end it there. I didn't certainly didn't mean for it to be this long, but hey, it is what it is. Hopefully you hung in there and you got the edification out of it. And at the same time, you were exhorted and comforted. That's what it's all about. So until the next video, see you in the next video.